Okay, welcome back to the World Championship Series Europe Premier League as we now get into our final series of the night. It's going to be Mini Razor versus Sam. That's right. <coughs> That's right. <laughs> you okay there, Sean? Yeah, I was coughing a little bit. I, okay. I think I swallowed at the same time as I was trying to speak and it didn't work out well. Okay. Uh, I hope that Mini Razor watched that series. Yes, that would be useful. Because it's going to be useful. Because, yeah. of course, Target is a Zerg player and so is Mini Razor. Spot on analysis there. Good stuff, uh, We can take a lot from that, I think. Take the way that San's playing, take the way that he played on certain maps. Uh, we are going to go to Frost, which wasn't a map that was used in the previous series, but this is going to be a best of three to decide who moves on in second place alongside Daishi. And unfortunately, who goes out in third place with Targa. Well, one thing's for sure, San, you know, showing that he was able to take that game on longer was uh, pretty impressive for the conditions that he's playing in. But at the same time, he did gain some pretty strong advantages, which lended themselves on nicely to the later stages. Um, being able to kill off that third base as easily Such as he a did. Big pick off. Yeah, very, very big indeed. So, guys, Frost will be our first map, as you mentioned before. I'm, I'm kind of surprised that we're seeing that here at the very beginning. And we'll see how San wants to open things up. So, the final series of the night begins. As we have spawning down to the bottom right hand corner, our blue Zerg representing Fnatic. It is Mini Razor. And down to the bottom left hand corner, we have our red Protoss. It is San. To think of the scale, um, you know, between the both players here is so big. Yeah. You know, San's been playing from the very first, the very first GSL. He played in it there. He got to a semi-final in 2011 in Code S. Then obviously went a little bit underground, let's say. He didn't really play that much, didn't get any results. But as a recent, he's got, I think, two, no, three finals in the last six months. Mm -hmm. um, one that he won just a couple of weeks back where he mentioned, where we mentioned he destroyed life, Stardust, Deer, just killed everybody and looked absolutely on form there. Mini Razor is, uh, or was, a, a part-time player. Started late in 2011, really. Didn't really get into the groove of things until the end of Wings of Liberty, which was late 2011, no wait, late 2012, and then beginning of 2013. A massive, massive difference. And then only just went full-time in September. Like a couple months back, he went full-time. Um, so a massive, massive difference of players here, but they take to the same battlefield, and uh, they are both equal here. Yeah, I mean, it's a good comparison you draw, because there's San with all of those accolades and achievements, and then there's Mini Razor, who kind of didn't do well at our previous Intellectual Masters clone, and that's yeah, kind of all we really see from Mini Razor. Yeah, back then <laughs> when played. San was participating in GSLs, Mini Razor was a student who just played StarCraft for fun and was just watching the GSLs. Yeah. So, so big, big difference here. Uh, and speaking of big, big differences, San, I just, as soon as I saw this pile and I was bemused because normally he is a guy who swears by Gateway Expand, but Changing here we are, up. different. Changing it up. So Nexus into Forge here uh, against a well, safer Mini Razor who's opened up for even six Zerglings here, by the way. Um, just doesn't really know what is going on. And uh, even extract the tricks out the queen there because he spent a lot of lava to get these six, six links out. But these six shouldn't really be able to do anything uh, at this point. Yeah. The forge is going to complete in time. These six links are more to counter the zealot, which could pop out, which we saw every single time in the last games against Targa. But this is going to be completely fine. So Mini Razor, I think we just answered our question. Definitely watch the games against Targa. But unfortunately for him, Sans uh, just completely changed his build and is more than comfortable in this spot. Yeah, and Mini Razor, unfortunately, hasn't really seen anything his opponent's doing. So these six lings are going to get over there and he's going to be a bit disappointed, really. Yeah, spawn and pull first, which could have been hatch first. Um, mm. You know, six lings could have been two lings, could have been four lings. As you can see, they won't do anything. They'll tickle the shields of the pylon and then just have to leave and uh, loses a ling and that's that done. Poor little Ling dies off for his troubles, and now that says to Mini Razor, it's time to take that third base and get that up on going. But Sam's going to confirm that instantaneously, and then from there he's going to opt uh, to. Well, we're going to see what he's going to opt for, as he's got double guesses already churning away. So could quite happily just go up to any tech he wants, really. Yeah, there's uh, a lot of different options for Sam to choose from once the Cybernet's core completes. Could start plus one attack early, could go for a massive gateway timing with Chrono Boost in the Forge and Cybercore. Um, 
could go for an immortal push from this, could go Stargate, could go even DTs. Um, and that's going to be up to Mini Razor to find out exactly what choice is going to be chosen. Look at that. Probe is escaping here, which you wouldn't really do if you were, for example, looking to go straight up in regular Stargate play. But it has been spotted very early on, which is nice. Yeah, very good spot there. Good control of the watchtower, making sure that that's the case. Uh, San realized that down to the south there was, uh, you know, that probe. So he actually pinned it down with the five lings, and that mm. was good. But uh, that was an opportunity for San to try and get out with that, and uh, it didn't work out in the end. A lot of lag here again by someone. Um, the, the name of shame has not come up yet. Let's be hopeful. And, <coughs> well, yeah. Stalker's going to pop out and push Possible attack has been spotted, by the way, by Mini Rays at the front door. Um, yeah. Doesn't know about the robotics facility, so the Overlord at the south is about to move in to try to spot that. But it is going to be, by the looks of it, an immortal play once again from San. Who would have guessed? Who would have guessed? I mean, uh, he's not going to use Stargate. He's not going to play this out <laughs> in a normal manner. Nope, that Overlord's going to get confirmation eventually, unless for some yeah. reason he reroutes it, but he even confirms the order once again, uh, just slightly changing up those commands. And sees the gateways going down right below him, so... Uh, but this might this might fool him, actually, because he's taken double gases at the natural name as well. Name of shame, 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 pop-up. Name of shame, pop-up. It's not going to do it. Name of shame, pop-up. <laughs> he's changing it up slightly. Because I thought that this was going to be some kind of a mortal play as well. But he's going for the wall prism instantly. So he's going to try and look to go here, I guess. Yeah, well, he doesn't... He can, you know, go into the drone lines a little bit here. Um, could go for the ramp. Full gateway, zealot sentry, potentially. Go for the ramp, go for and the ramp. Go for, he could go for an immortal push behind this as well. Go for the ramp. I like the ramp. There's no overlords there. There's only one zergling at the mm. bottom. It's, it's not normally a place that you cover with overlords. Ooh, zergling, low health. Oh, you little hero. Wow. Good job. What good job. It's a good scout. Very good scout. All right, Queens, what are you going to do? You have to move. Well, how much damage is this going to do? Because you obviously want to try to get something dealt with this to help out from what it seems to be uh, an immortal play behind it. Not necessarily an attack. Could be a third base like we saw from Heavy Rain. That's a big warp in. Wow. No units out yet. They're still making 10 roaches. And he's just going to go straight for the mineral line here. So... Uh, quite an ambitious move. So he's, he's got to be, he's got to be wary of these roaches popping out. Yeah, he really does. He has to force field them in straight away and then pin them up against those zealots. Nice pick up there. Yeah, very very good pick up. And now those roaches don't really have a whole lot of room to micro. They have to wiggle around behind that mineral line. Another good pick up. Gets the queen uh, and tries to get an out from that point on. Pick up. Oh, that was pretty good. Only trading off a couple of zealots there, which is always nice. He picked off a yep. queen, a couple of drones. And the Immortals are amassing behind all of this with extra gateways going down. That technically hasn't been spotted by Mini Razor, but he's keeping good at tabs and eyes on his opponent's third bases. And he can pretty much anticipate the follow-up. Yeah, one can only imagine that would be the case. Yep. He's got a decent drone count, decent production. That did stunt it a little bit with that queen kill in the main, but only by a little bit because he rebuilt it immediately. So mm -hmm. it's not a big, big loss. And his mm -hmm. overall production has been pretty good as well. Creep spread's okay. But we will see this attack soon. We will see it. Poor Queen gets pushed away from the expansion there. Uh, so he really needs to get back so he can actually throw down some extra. Uh, Lava injects and didn't even get himself uh, drawn. Did not then. He definitely tried. Yeah. So here comes the attack. And it hasn't been spotted because of the control of the watchtower. Um, sorry, it hasn't been yeah, spotted. That was, the nice. that was a really nice Mothership Core movement out there. Take yeah. the watchtower first. If we see drones made, I'm going to shoot myself. But he no. should not be doing that because he knows there's no third down. He knows Sans play style. He just needs to not get caught by force. Remember, this is only slow link, so Roach is very, very important here. He's going to go for a wraparound. So he's got a handful of Roaches at the front, a couple around the back. Yeah, and this is the first he's actually seen of the movement out. Um, but again, he's been anticipating it the whole time. So how well are these Roaches going to work out? Because there's a lot of area that he has to force field down. Throws down a few preemptively as that left-hand flank pushes in. The right-hand side has actually been breached. As if the Immortals on the left-hand side, he has to get those back in a Warp Prism somehow. But the Warp Prism's already warping in units on that right. That Immortal is so, so low. He has to target that down with the forces on the left. But that was a lot of Roaches which died off. But at the same time, a lot of force fields that were expended. Yeah, so yeah. Blow for blow. He's 
Drones trying to come in once again. He picks up the weakened Immortal. Absolutely has to keep that alive. Warping in a few more units here. The Drones actually come off the line to try and combat that Immortal on the right-hand side. But the one on the left is just not dying, whilst one at the back also dishing out a lot of damage. This could have worked out for Sam, but he has to pick up the Immortal. He needs to save it. Oh, he doesn't just barely unable to grab that back up. Uh, seven more Roaches, nine more Roaches, three more Queens. Mother should call a little bit exposed. Ooh. Immortal exposed. Another great pickup from Sam. Oof. He's had a lot of good pickups, but as you said, the sentry count is... Well, sentries' force was low. There's only two sentries left. Yeah. So the next attack from uh, Mini Razor is going to be darting towards the Immortals. Got to be careful of the Zealots at the front. Exactly. In the end, that was the best position Mini Razor could have taken that fight because of how yeah. many force fields he actually churned out of his opponent so quickly. Lost a lot of drones and creep spread, though. Going to be harder to engage. Not a strong economy. 44 to 43 now in favor of if he Sam. Pops one, if he pops that weak Immortal... If he puts a cap yeah. in its ass. If it goes down, he would be in a much better position. And I think he could. He could certainly get there. Although the energy on the sentries is messed up a little bit further. But yeah. San needs to take an engagement closer towards this small gap so he can force field off smaller chokes. He's got to get to that weaker mortal. It's very important. Spreads out just a few more. If he pushed through there, he could use the high ground for the, some of those roaches as well. But nice as, creature, man. Uh, the stalker count keeps rising. It's a lot of sto it's a lot of roaches, though, then. It's yeah. a lot of roaches. 38 roaches. They can just get right up close. There's a lot of queens as well. Here we go. There's a few force fields, but at the same time, there's not many more left. A few of those sentries at the back do have it. And he's going to try and get oh! on top of it. Picks it up instantly. Oh, oh the wall prism goes down as well. A good pick up there from Mini Razor to actually kill the off, and he's going to get that second immortal. No pickups for you, sir, as now it's just roaches against gateway units, and Mini Razor is going to be able to eventually push this yeah, back. Yeah, getting the immortals is key here. The, the stalker sentries aren't good enough. And the 19-year-old from Sweden looks like he is going to take the first map away from San GG. Good game there from Mini Razor. And he does what he needs to do to win, which is hold off against the attacks. And great anticipation of using those queens to bring down that warp prism, knowing that that was the only escape route for those immortals. And it would have got out had he not been so mindful of that position. Really good decision making by Mini Razor. Yep, good game there. And he takes map number away now, away from San, and is just one game away in his debut in the Premier League to potentially make it to the round of 16. Like many before him who have debuted in the Premier League and gone straight to the round of 16, he could be following in their footsteps. He certainly could be. All right, so we need to get on to game number two very quickly, uh, as I'm quite excited now to see if he's able to do it. Uh, and then we'd have a, another Korean actually being knocked out. Yeah, 4GG in Group C. Our last group was eliminated in last place. And with a single Korean in each and every group we have in the round of 32, it could be a 50-50 ratio if Sans knocked out here. Yeah, certainly could be. All right, well, we're just waiting for game number two to get up and running here. But after seeing the way in which he held that, um, that was very impressive. But I would uh, argue that the map was a little bit more in his favor there, dealing with something like that. He found yep. the perfect engagement location because of how many force fields were spent in that first engagement. Yeah. So Didn't take damage good. versus the uh, warp prism in the early start as well. That could have been a lot worse. That could have slowed yeah. him down for the follow-up as well. Um, rebuilt his queen immediately on time and so on. Um, yeah, a good solid game number one there from Mini Razor. Good engagements, hunting down the immortals, very important. Uh, as well as San being able to micro intensively with the warp prism, being able to keep the immortals alive in the heat of battle with playing from the Korean server. Not easy to do. So he was also able to do quite well himself. I think we, well, with seeing Polar Knight as map number two, I wouldn't be surprised if we saw a very similar style from San come out as he used against Targa. Uh, but at the same time, if we see Mini Razor being very, very mindful of something like that as well, and then eventually just going for a good wraparound if he doesn't take too much damage to an initial poke of gateways, uh, he could do well again. I, I know yeah. I'm calling quite a lot of that before it all happens, but I imagine that's what San's probably gonna do on this map. Paul Knight's not the uh, easiest of maps to play a straight-up game on. It's a, yeah. a map which has a third base quite a way away from the natural, which means there's a lot of aggressive timings that uh, a Zerg player can use to capitalize on the fact if you try to move out to take it fast, which has been a common occurrence recently. A few centuries, few zealots to take it, very minimal units. But on a map this big, it's a lot harder to execute, which means you need to take a slower third base. It allows the Zerg player to build up a big timing against that third base. So it's not an easy map. It's one of the maps that throughout the 2013 World Championship Series was vetoed out, just eliminated in the map selection by almost every single Protoss player. Um, so things haven't changed that drastically uh, since then. So this is not the easiest of maps, and definitely have to agree with you. Seeing something aggressive from San again, a mortar push, why not? Yeah. 
Uh, right now, Mini Rose is not in our lobby just yet. Uh, taking a few moments after that game just to compose himself and make sure he's okay. As Well, he's now joined, so hopefully we'll be getting into our second game in a second. And he, again, he is one map away from not only eliminating San from Premier League, but also advancing on to the round of 16. So can he do it? Can our young Swedish Zerg yeah. topple a tyrant? If he did, then it would be three Terrans, three Zerg, and two Protoss players so far in the round of 16 after four days of round of 32 action. Slight disclaimer, don't tweet me saying, Jadong's the tyrant, and uh, tyrant can mean other things, but yeah. So let's go into game number two here for Polar Knight. Um, right now, I am fearful for San. I am fearful for San. Yeah. All right, so let's jump on in as we have. Spawning up to the north as our blue Zerg representing Fnatic, it is Mini Razor. And down to the south, we have our red Protoss. It is San. The whole hopes of Europe rests on one young man's shoulders. A 19-year-old from Sweden who goes by the name of Victor Malmberg. Can amazing. this young man carry the weight of the world upon his shoulders? You just said Europe before. It got more intense as it went on. Oh, okay. That escalated quickly. Oh, boy. <laughs> uh, but in general, like, Mini Razor, ever <coughs> since he... Me and me and Todd cast him ages and ages and ages ago when he was qualifying for... He qualified for the Iron Squid Season 2. Um, I believe it was Mini Razor. Uh, it might have been Zanster. It was one of the two. <laughs> They're both the same person. <laughs> anyway. Same team. <laughs> uh, but no, um, it was really, really impressive to actually see him uh, see his run through that. Um, if it was him. <laughs> now that I <I'm> do <laughs> Backtracking. All right, okay, let's just abandon this thought completely. Or you could have gone full confidence and no, made no. yourself sound right. No, it's it's gone now. It's gone. Never it's mind. all over to you, Sean. Go. Okay. <laughs> Never mind. Zanster, <laughs> Mini Razor, whoever you are, the Fnatic played it great. Um, coming into this next one, we do have Mini Razor changing his build up, not trying to gain that small advantage, um, which he tried in the last game, which didn't work. Um, so he's gone hatchery first. And we do have a gateway opening from San. Like you said, I, I guess one would believe that we would be seeing a, an immortal push come out again from San, unless he's going to try another build that he's got up his sleeves. I mean, he has to have something good up his sleeve if he's going to try anything else. Because uh, this is just what he's renowned for in this matchup. Just these kinds of zealot pokes with follow-ups afterwards that have normally garnered him so much results and so much uh, so much strength behind his PVZ. But right now it's not looking so hot. And Mini Razor, uh, despite you know losing quite a few drones in, in, during that game, in the end, he showed exactly how to deal with it and exactly when to deal with it. Yeah. Uh, in that previous game. Oh, can the 19-year-old do it? As he has spotted the gateway expand here um, with his initial overlord and then will backtrack towards the natural and will spot the zealot movement out too. Did click on it, even though he can see it quite clearly uh, and does know that this pressure is coming. So wouldn't need to worry too much here. He does have queens on the way uh, against this. This is fine, usually. Um, there will be a small little tension area if the Zealot does go over there to try and get a drone, since he didn't build any Zerglings yet. Which is a little bit risky in a certain regard, but the Zealot will just hold the Zealot Nogatar by the looks of it. Yep. And uh, from there on out, we'll see San probably add on two gateways after this pylon is finished. Uh, and then we'll see if he wants to out on a fourth at this pylon behind his mineral line, which is normally the go-to for San, but he has to be careful because Mini Race is already positioning an Overlord ready to spot something like that. Yeah, he's going to spot the second gas, and that's very important here. He's, he's going to know that the gateway is added on here quite easily, I'd imagine, because that's just part of the build upon seeing the no gas taken at this point. But if a gas is taken now, then we will see a tech instead of a fourth gateway. But where's the gas? It's not there. So there's the fourth gateway. And he still sees no gas. <laughs> Mini Razor sees no gas. He doesn't quite see the Cybernetics Core being Chrono boosted into. But he knows that this is going to be a gateway attack already. It's that simple. One gas, bro. 
exactly the same pylon placement, and Minion Raiders is going to have exactly the same Overlord placement as Targa did uh, to preempt something like this. But the probe has already seen the Overlord positioning itself. It's so funny that Sam <laughs> puts the pylon in the exact same place. Yeah, and then the Overlord there as well. He's like, ah, okay, that's fine. Um, Mini Raiders needs to get in gas. Okay, yeah, he can't. He's he has delayed the extractors a lot, but he actually needs to get in gas. Here. Yeah. Okay, it's a little bit slow getting into there. Um, roaches or Zergling speed. He's building a spine crawler, by the way, which is to help out against this, since he knows it's there, or at least knows the threat of it. And from this point, I would only imagine the robotics facility is the follow-up from Sad. A bit of pressure with the Zealots into Sentry product facility thrown down into the Immortal Push, exactly how we played it earlier on. Yeah, and we weren't anticipating really anything else other than this. So now Mini Razor is probably not anticipating anything other than this. So he knows probably where his opponent is going to be going from here. And all he has to do is now prepare. <laughs> yeah. He's gone for a two-base layer. Um, yeah. Could be for Roach Speed, Borrow type style of play, uh, which we've seen quite common um, from... Uh, Vortex in this style against this kind of play. But he's throwing down double evolution chambers uh, as part of a wall and throwing a spine crawler. Could go. Uh, Zergling Heavy's not I, it's not the best against an immortal push with so many sentries and zealots, but. I really have this horrible feeling he's going to go infestation. Ooh. Oh, he gets the pylon. Uh, at least that supply box is his opponent for a second. And uh, for now, that robo yeah, is I mean, up and running. Uh, Swarm Wars are great. Yeah. Fantastic unit, man. Mm. All right, so, San, what are you going to do from here? Melee starts, actually, for as well as the Carapace. So he could hold himself strong during yeah. this mid-game. Well, that's Where's his gas taken go? away from his uh, for, uh, tech straight away, so he has to wait a little bit there. But there is the Infestation Pit. So it's going to be Zergling upgrades with Swarm Host play, most likely, here. Definitely could still be um, Infestors, though. It's not totally out of this world. Mm -hmm. Third base trying to be taken in, but that's going to get stopped immediately. Slight change up from Sango in for Warp Prism this early on. And adding on uh, Forge as well. So at least he denies the third. That's really good. Like, this is the th this is a risky run as Mini yeah. Razor if you're going to go for this style. You don't have a load of roaches to mm. now claim your third base. Well, San sees no third base. He's like, come on, man, what are you doing? And actually yeah. sends an hallucinated oracle inside the main base and sees the infestation pit. So now he can only imagine is what we expected it to be. So from this point, he doesn't need to attack anymore. Swarm hosts or infestors are going to be good against a two base attack, but San will just expand. He doesn't need to attack at all. He's finally going to clean up this uh, Zealot push that will also be able to claim his expansion as he cancelled and saved the drone, which is very, very important. Mm. And he's going to go home with that drone. There's a lot of links, though. The, uh, there's already 19 out and there's 10 more on the way because he's not exactly like, well, actually, he's building more spines. Yeah. He still thinks it's going to be an attack. Sees the warp prism. He's got to really read into this game soon because there's a third base coming in and yeah. a dark shrine. Both, could, if not addressed soon, could mean trouble. Yeah, it could really get out of hand. He doesn't see anything that is going on right now. The warp prism is going to head back home as like, well. All these links could deny that third right now. So many spines, so much committal uh, to a push that just isn't really coming. Ah, mini razor. Okay, this really is trouble. It's double trouble. Six spines to an attack that isn't coming. Yeah. He's misreading this game quite heavily. He still thinks he attacks him, he just doesn't know when and where. Um, but it's not even there. I mean, there's not even an immortal been made. It's just the warp prism. <laughs> so uh, Dark Shrine is going to be a pain to deal with, obviously. Hive. Hive. Ha Yo, bro. Ha ha. Uh -huh. What? Well, if it was still a two-base attack, Claris. Uh, Vipers yeah. are pretty good with fungal growth. Yeah, but, but he's spotted the third base now. Okay. I suppose that he can still use that in an aggressive manner. The combination of those units are good, very good, actually. Mm -hmm. And he's going to catch a couple of units here. Uh, good force fields, but uh, wow. still there's links in there. And they do have one-one upgrades, remember? Yeah, so they're tearing through those stalkers pretty quickly. Uh, eventually get cleaned up, but now. But also. the thing is, because his economy is so low, he's oh, going to have one big power punch. But look at this, the wall push up. Uh, <laughs> Okay, this is gonna hurt. This is really oh for, uh, fungal, fungal, fungal roo, fungal roo. He remembers he has fungal. <laughs> now he kills it. Uh, okay, so and the dark templars in the main get run away. So, Ooh. okay, this is getting scary though because. All of this now is lining up really nicely for San to have a really good composition by the yeah, time I mean, anything comes. San's in great shape. Yeah. Like I said, there's an attack still possible with one or two Vipers on the third base with a good fungal, locking the army down, and a couple of Vipers. That's a good attack. 
but I'm not sure. It doesn't look like he's going to go for it. He's trying to go for the Ultra's Cavern here. Mm -hmm. Obviously, Sans seen the Hive, so... He has on another Robo. <laughs> yeah, he has on another Robo. Started a Mortal Production already, too. Yeah, he, he's fine. I think he's fine. <sighs> like, it's with the limited bad. economy that Mini Race is going to have, he can only have so many Ultras, right? So, oh, of course. I mean, he's, he's so starved of yeah. money. He's got very low supply count, very low drone count. Oh, gee. And there's Zealot Charge on the way. I'm sure that the gas after the gas been taken on third, that we'll see the Temple Archives not too far away in this game either. Adding an Archons to the mix as well is always great. Dude. And it's just a very bad position that Mini Race has put himself in. He was always good against a two base attack, which yeah. is what we, you know, initially kind of thought we could see. But with two uh, Ultralists, they will have decent upgrades if you think, but two Immortals at a time right now. Yeah, this is going to be hard for Mini Razor to ever deal with, be it aggressively or defensively. And now Sans cleaning up the rocks as well. Immortals, great for killing that off very fast and then claiming that base. So Sans going to go up to a very well-protected four-base economy, and there's not a whole lot you can do from there. Uh, no, it's it's very well-protected. And as an Ultralist player, you are the aggressive one. Yes. <laughs> because the, yeah. the Sans just sits back and builds an army which you can't beat eventually. So you have to go soon. A Viper's been added on uh, at this point now. Decided to go for these Ultras, then the Viper. And he has to attack very, very soon. Otherwise, the game's going to start to spiral. Adding on three extra Queens as well. Going to be used to attack here. A couple of transfuses onto these Ultralisks. But with the Templar Archives done, a couple of feedbacks on the Viper, on the Queens, if he researches Storm, whatever, whatever he wants to build. Uh, Archon's obviously great against the Zirkling uh, mass as well. And the, 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 uh, the sand is leaving the hourglass, unfortunately. It really is. Um, now sand is just amassing a very strong army. I'm wondering how many of these immortals he's actually spotted so far. But, I mean, what can you do in Mini Race's position? Even if you see your opponent has loads of immortals, he sees another one pop out from this main, um, <laughs> you just can't do anything because yeah. you don't have the economy to fuel it. If you go for one, well, you've got the economy to build one army. In, the, in this kind yeah. of style of game, you've got one army. And then with that one army, you need to win the game. Otherwise, you cannot rebuild. Not really. Especially compared to what San has. And Dark Templar also getting a few kills itself once again. Only one or two. Not too much. But we have now Zealots moving over to right-hand side to pressure this base. There is one Ultralisk on guard, though. He is the gatekeeper. And uh, not really much that those are going to do. This is getting difficult. This is getting very difficult. These army supplies, I mean, they just shouldn't be like this right now. If San attacks, that's a helping hand. Yeah. It's not the case, though. And it's up to Mini Razor to do something soon. Um, with a Stargate already been built to, which hasn't been used, is ready for the transition, which is usually over to Broodlord. So he's already kind of ready, because as soon as he sees that transition, he's all right, time to build the Fleet Beacon, add a couple more Stargates and go, and then start his Tempest climb. But still, there's no real need for San to do anything. He's got four bases. It, like I said, it's up to Mini Razor to call the shots here. He's taking the fourth base, he's playing this out slow, but his army cannot beat Sans right now. Unless it's, there's some magical fungals and blinding clouds, it can't do that right now. There's no way he wins. It's a very difficult spot for him to be in. Storm's about to finish, extra gateways are being added on. He knows where this war prism is, so technically, yes, he could kill it off if he grabs it over and pins it down next to these queens. Uh, but he decides to leave it. And this army, once again, is still denying this fourth base from going down for Mini Razor. His economy has been so limited, so short during this game that it's just come to a head. And unfortunately, he can't really do much. The 19 year old from Sweden, Claris, is finding it difficult to take on the weight of the world on his shoulders as we see Sand fighting back with the power of the Korean inside. I can't tell if this is your epic movie voice or David Attenborough voice anymore. <laughs> epic movie voice, man. I'm going to make movie trailers one day with my okay. epic movie voice. I'm going to put on this dark and husky voice. Just like Batman. Just like Batman. I'm going to be like, on the 25th of February, 2014. Oh, we, all, we saw the name for a split second. Having you. Lag. Oh, okay. Having you get like a swell. 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 Yeah, swell. Where was I? On the 25th <laughs> of February 2014. Swell. Uh, that's funny. Um, Sean, are you Batman? Is that what you're trying to tell me? I roam the streets of Cologne as Batman. <laughs> you're like, During the day, it's I am just a mere nerd that plays <laughs> StarCraft. But at night, Kolaris, 
I protect the people of Cologne. Is this only during carnival or? No, this is every, I don't sleep. <laughs> okay, fair play. I have a butler <laughs> of my apartment that builds me suits and prepares my bat car. <laughs> my Batmobile, sorry. This is, this is either true or you're very, very deluded. <laughs> <laughs> Either one. I am Batman. Sean is Batman, guys. Confirmed. This army is actually pretty powerful by Mini Razor, I gotta say. Yeah. Look at it. It's decent. It's decent. Look at how but many queens it, he's if got. If San is set up ready to fight, then he's got the better army. He needs lots of feedbacks, and then he wins. That's basically the rule here. The golden rule. Yeah, lots of feedback, some pretty good storms, uh, and just make sure his army spread out, most importantly, I'd suppose. Um, Got to neglect the ultra splash damage and also cause the fungal growth. Uh, we see the air upgrades being researched from San, that is looking kind of ready um, for the eventual switch that he's expecting to see as ultralisks are pretty crap, to be honest. Let's just cut to the chase here. Aww. They're not the best of units. They can be in certain scenarios. But they're so cute. Yeah, but they're yeah, they're pretty bad. Um, no. You'll you'll see what I mean soon. For the longest time when Hots came out, I just built Ultralisks to the skin. Remember that the burrow? They had that crazy burrow oh, thing. Oh, that was crazy, man. Oh my god, they that should charge cute. underground. Oh, he saved some uh, infestors there. That was nice, and he saved these ultras as well. But yeah, that was that was that wasn't cute. That was scary and devastating. Yeah, look at these changelings. <laughs> it's funny at the back. Uh, DT just walked in though to combat the fourth army, and San is just looking for position. He's looking to find either the position himself or find his opponent out of position. I guess that's kind of the same thing, but whatever the case, he's just kind of looking around, taking a new base while he can, increasing his overall army strength, getting ready to spread extra stargate. Which are the real zealots? Ah, okay, those ones chasing. There's actually one changeling. He's like, I am with you, brothers. Wait a minute. <laughs> Uh, but, okay, so he's going to have to, mm. yeah. Sans Evacuate. actually looking to fight maybe on the right-hand side, and he's got a pylon on the left, just on the other platform or loading the other platform. I think he'll send in waves of Zealots and DTs. This is ridiculous harassment on this fourth base. It's never been let alone. Yeah, it's, it's not going to either. Yep. And San isn't going to leave the main and natural alone either. He'll warp in from that pylon and just kind of keep pressure on the third with his army, but consistently warp in over, over, and over, and over, and over. Feed the Bakuru! One, two, three, four. Okay, so he did well there, but he actually transfuses the queens anyway, so he didn't get those. Um, but yeah, just keep keep pressuring. And uh, now, I mean, he's got plus two air weapons on the way. He's playing it slow because he doesn't yeah. need to really rush. Remember, there's no spire, so it's yeah. not like the warp prism can get stopped. If queens come over, he warps in more and more and more. Zealots are never going to stop up to this north location. They're doing all right against the Zerglings. That Ultralisk is certainly helping out quite considerably, though. So and this is just that. a, and uh, I feel a checkmate p like carriers, because why the hell not? Whoa. Uh, he's just <laughs> in this position where I can't see him being. Be he's he's yeah. on so much income. He's got a lot of gas. He's spending his money on bloody carriers. But we do see Mini Razor survive and has that fourth base, finally. He hasn't got the best of income still, but he has a lot of money back because he just hasn't fought at all this game. Like, he just hasn't taken any fights. Yeah, he doesn't need to. Uh, you mean San, right? You uh, were talking about San just I mean, both. They, I mean, oh, no okay. one's fought at all. Yeah. Um, it's weird. It's really weird to see carriers actually being built here. But he's just trying to boost the heck out of Why those. Not, man? He's got some good upgrades coming for them. Yeah, they're going to be really, really strong. I don't see what you can actually build to deal with those, unfortunately. Mini Razor's like, oh, God, he's got that base on the left, too. <laughs> you know oh, the no. funny thing, though, is that I think... He can see the carriers being built. Yes, he can. Yeah. <laughs> Down oh, in yeah. this overlord. Yeah. So. Double spy starts. Yeah. Okay, he's like, yeah, maybe I need that. Time to get some upgrades for those bad boys and start to look to uh, use some corruptors, some mules, switches, maybe. He has quite the bank, to be fair. Yep. Like I said, he hasn't really fought. Throughout a 25 minute game, he's only lost 7,700 resources. That's just not a lot of units over 25 minutes. Protoss has lost more, but a lot of it was those zealots focused up to this base that didn't really kill the yeah. expansion. They were just trading, trading, trading. Yeah. Another base down to this bottom right here for Mini Razor, and the army for San is still very, very strong. Again, it's really a feedback that are the linchpin of this army. Yeah, and this is just a game of, uh, you know, who gets bored first. Because whoever attacks um, is going to have a little bit of a disadvantage, uh, disadvantageous fight because obviously the other guy's going to be in position. Hmm. Is it a game of mousetrap? Uh, no, not really. Is it a game of Cluedo? Kind of. Kind of? Well, it, it used to be, but not anymore. Oh, okay. How did it used to be? 
I'm going to test you. <laughs> Pluto? Because I don't know which part or which unit was going to be the one that killed Mini Razor. Oh, damn. I didn't know which one it would be. I thought it, at first I thought it was the Immortals, then yeah. I thought it was the High Templar. But now it's the Carriers. But now it's the Carriers. <laughs> oh, God. I wasn't too sure, so I wasn't sure who had the knife. What topsy-turvy world are we living in, Sean? A weird one, this game. 25 Car minutes of passive play. Carriers are about to kill a Zerg. And the funny thing is, <laughs> you know you have all the complaints about Swarm Host being played passively and stuff by a lot of people who watch StarCraft? Yeah. I mean, <laughs> look at what this game. This, this is uh, it's kind of a, a similar thing just about the Swarm Host. It's just kind of sitting back and waiting, 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 waiting. But eventually there will be a fight. And it is always going to be up from this position for San. San's going to be like, you know what? I'll fight now because I'm ready. <laughs> I got this uh, unstoppable army. And I think if you ask any player out there, if you had maximum money and you could build both army, well, actually, I, I, that's a lie, maybe, because I'm sure there's a couple of Swarmers play with. I'll take that challenge. Oh. <laughs> but if you have, I mean, standardly, normally, if the Protoss player can max out on whatever he wants and take a fight against another Zerg player maxed out on whatever he wants, then the Protoss player is going to win. If you didn't know the compositions to begin with, yes. like from either player. One of those carriers actually got a kill over on the natural, but I don't know why they killed, so... Carriers ready to fight! This is weird! Interceptors! I didn't know this could happen! Feedbacks! Feedbacks! Oh my god! Alright, okay. Just, uh... That was one of those cringe moments again. <laughs> Kolaris puts his hands over his over his eyes and says, Tell me when it's over. I was like, ah! It's That's like... a lot of fungal, a lot of blinding cloud. Well, to be as fair... As the Grand Army is gone. I mean, yeah, it went, but... but... carriers... They oh, just don't. 22 Corruptors, four Void Rays, take to the skies. Courier has arrived. This is not going very well for... Ultralis picking off bases in the middle here. Get him, get him. And this is a weird one. The bank's still in favor of uh, Mini Rays here. Wait a minute, Sean. 21 Corruptors could actually deal with this. Absolutely. He needs to get back to Archons and Void Rays. Absolutely he can. Ah! Uh, and he doesn't really I, have I that much mineral banks the, of all the zealots he warped in. The upgrades for the air are stronger, though. Yeah, Remember, they it's are. only 1-1 uh, one, one, and just now starting 2-2. Two, two. But he needs to get all his units together and then take another fight. What a weird game, man. Yeah. Uh, and Sans just going to keep playing this out. Yeah, um, he's, got, he's still got a good yeah. income, remember. It's good. So even though he spent all his money, he can Ooh, do it again. Void rays. That's nice. Yeah, yeah, it's very good. It's very good. Void rays very, very good against Corruptors. Uh, backed up by Arkham and Storm. Uh, sick good. Um, the Ultras actually decided to not engage the cannons and stuff on the left-hand yeah. side. They thought about it, but there's a High Templar, there's Warpins available. And now we have 25 Corruptors, 3 Infestors, no Queens left really, uh, versus 8 Void Rays, 8 Carriers. I have to favor the Protoss army with the upgrades they have. Yeah, those Void Rays are going to melt those Corruptors, as are the, uh, the uh, yeah. Carriers as and well. And Archons underneath, which means you can't clump up as the Corruptors yeah. to so you burst can't, damage. You can't really like focus down the cor Carriers because they'll all start clumping up, and this is going to be weird. He has to separate them all out initially before they even yeah. take the fight. Maybe if he uses the Vipers effectively, drag out the Corruptors, I mean drag out the uh, Carriers and then slowly take a fight, drag out the Archons. I think this is Sam's punishment for saying, oh no, he's not going to play a macro game. He's like, right, watch this. And he's like, carrier time. But uh, I... That's a good fungal. Yeah, that is a nice fungal. He caught a lot of vi Void Rays in that. Uh, but this army's still going to dissolve very, very quickly. One grab does occur, and the uh, carrier will die very, very quickly. But at the same time, all that's left is Corruptors, and they're going to yeah. die fast. Yeah. Bye-bye, Corruptors. Their upgrades are uh, quite strong in this game. 2-2, two, two, not done for these Corruptors, then. Well, the air fight goes in favor of San here. There are more and more units being made for many reasons, but it does not have enough money. And GG is called. All right, so that brings us to one to one. Yeah, that brings us one one here, guys. As we now have San and Mini Razor in a final game to determine who moves on to the round of 16. That's right. One last one to see how this goes. Yeah. As the first game was the Immortal All In, which was stopped. And then the second game was this long 31-minute uh, game. Not long, 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 but 31-minute game there. Slightly bizarre. A weird one. Yes. Not the uh, usual game we, we see. I will have to go out on a limb and say that I was flabbergasted. Yeah. During that game. That was one of the games that I could say the same. I'm just waiting for the hashtag flabbergasted to come out from Ben and Kevin over in WCS America. <laughs> they already went over to hashtag cheeky during a previous thing uh, from hashtag dicey. So in the next one I'm trying to go for is flabbergasted. Okay. All right. Anyway, so what's our next map going to be, Sean? Uh, I do not know. Sorry. Um, let me have a look. 
Heavy rain. Ooh, okay. Heavy rain. Okay, this could this could also go down to the wire. In terms of how we saw Sam play out before against Targa, uh, and then Mini Razor showed his adeptitude to try and transition on, even if he was put in a disadvantageous position there on Polar Knight, he still gave it a good old go. Uh, but feedback, good unit. Yes, very good unit. Um, very good ability. High Templar, good unit. Um, looks like we have a quick sec coming out from Mini Razor who has consumed a lot of energy drinks and water and needs to regularly pop to the little boy's room, um, as in every other map, Yeah, it's uh, like unfortunately for him. Um, but we're going to go to the final game of the evening, so we will find out with this next map which player will go in through in second place alongside Daishi. And after seeing those two maps, I can't really call it anymore. Um, you going to favor San? Or are you going to favor Mini Razor? Heavy rain. I don't know. I think it's really close. 50-50. Yeah. I, I don't. I, I I don't know. I, it's it's too close. It's cool. I think so as well, Sean. I think so as well. This is going to be really, really down to it. As we now start the countdown for game number three, moving on to heavy rain, see which one of these players will advance onto the round of 16 live studio events here in Cologne for WCS Europe. That's right, it's a lot of fun. And once we get closer and closer to that, tickets will be released. You guys can come watch the games live. I know a lot of you have been here recently for the Intel Stream Masters uh, and prior to that as well. So looking forward to seeing some of you come again. And when the tickets are available to be bought, we will let you know. Uh, and we sold out for the Intel Stream Masters. It yeah. was packed. It really was. It was packed. So thanks everyone for coming, even though most people couldn't stay the, the whole time because it started at 12 <laughs> and finished at 3. Yeah, that was quite long. You P had one of the a. marathon not days. PM. <laughs> you had a marathon casting day again, having to do the final. Uh, so anyway, let's get into this final map as we have spawning down to the south, our Fnatic representative. It is Mini Razor. And then we have the Zealot King himself spawning up to the top as our red Protoss. It is Sam. All right. Um, he made, I mean, when he played against Targa on this map earlier, it was uh, three gates into gases, then the immortal play, basically. Didn't decide to go for the two base, stayed on three gateways, threw down his third base, and then approached the game from there. Mini Razor obviously would have watched that. Mm hmm. I wonder if he'll open up for a hatchery first again. As part from the first game that he tried to go for the six links, he had in the other ones, really. Or the other one. Targa's opened up uh, quite a few hatch firsts. I think it's the right choice here. Yeah. I think he could get away with it. Scout's inside his main base. Last game decided does not want to have gateways inside there. Scout's over on the right as well. Not fully, but does scout out a little bit. And uh, gonna scout out the entirety of his natural Does just to make sure what's going on. Want to find gateways outside his base. Well, he's sending his first link straight right on up there once those end up popping. So he's playing very, very carefully here. This is do or die for Mini Razor. He is a guy that is debuting in Premier and he is one map away from advancing onto the round of 16. That is big. Yes, that would be so big for him considering yeah. his career in StarCraft just has been a. I mean, compared to the, the other players in Premier League, Mini Razor just doesn't have a career in StarCraft 2 when it comes to actual results. This is his first big one, and he could go to the round of 16. Being in Premier League in itself is a massive privilege for every single player that enters it. With the uh, the prize money up for grabs, just being in Premier League guarantees yourself $2,000, which is a lot of money. And then, of hmm. course, climbing up $1,000. And for now, we have... The Cybernetic Score positioned in such a way that he's probably going to try and hide away it and keep his opponent in the dark about what Chrono Boost is going to go on. But of course, he has to pay attention to that Overlord on the right hand side as well. So, Look that at could this. Pull him. Three hatch before pull. Yum, yum, yum. I'm, big, mm. big opportunity taken here from Mini Razor saying, you know what? This guy likes his, uh, likes his gateway expands. Let's uh, abuse that a little bit. Yeah. So, we're going three hatcheries here, then gas, then spawn and pull. Pretty much the greediest is the greediest build you can go for as a Zerg player here. And San oh. sees the natural, <laughs> goes to the third, and says, By golly gosh, you have a third Nexus. I mean, a third hatchery. That would be funny if I had a third Nexus. Yeah, like, wait a minute. Hatchery. <laughs> so, are we going to see the Sand Gates now? The sand gates could come. 
Uh, and I think that, you know, that will be probably advisable. I, I want to see how much Chrono Boost he's actually going to spend on the Cybernetics core because it's so tucked away, so far away from Overlord's prying eyes. Yeah. There's not been any... Ex ah, there we go. All uh, right. Okay. He's got a probe on the right-hand side. His Zealot's already going around that side. Mothership core coming down south. Uh, let's have a look at the gas, maybe, if he goes all the way to the main base. Zergling speed is on the way. Six links already about to pop. Fourth gateway added on, and Mini Razor will see this very fast. Yep. Sees that, sees that gateway timing, sees the lack of gas, knows exactly what's going on. He's going to bet sand gated. Yeah, and after, after you know, seeing that it was a gateway expansion anyway, he ha even though he hasn't seen the two gates at the front, he knows yeah. that they have to be there. There's no other thing that could really be there. Oh, well, he's found the probe. Nicely done, but it is being protected by a zealot. Yes, it is, but there are more links coming. And the mothership calls there as well, though. And so that's going to go up. More links are going to have to be built here. And he doesn't have a roach, Warren. This could get no. sticky. Mm, it's definitely going to get sticky. Links alone, sometimes not enough once the zealot count rises to a certain point. Once it gets past the you know six, seven, eight mark, that's when it gets very difficult to combat. Yeah. 12 links on the way, though. We are going to have the first warp in now. Here's what Mini Razor has to do. I feel that he has to leave a few lings on this left-hand side so that he can always threaten the pylon to make sure that Sand doesn't constantly... Because he needs the Roach Warren out. I really feel he needs this Roach Warren out. Yeah, you're definitely right there. But he's poking in again with his Overlord to see if the gas has been taken in the main base to see if this is a uh, fake out or something. But it is the real deal. Mm. He's going to see it's the real deal. And that will be his notification on whether he builds Roaches or not, which will be yes in this case. Yeah. Chrono boost the in the gateways as well, so this is definitely the real deal. Spine even being started now as well. Jeez. It's gonna, the, the attack's going to come before the roaches are ready. He needs to build these roaches on the third base. With the three, three or four lavas that he's got, he yeah. does. Good play. This but it's a little mask. bit too late. It's going to be a bit scary here to, for him to deal with. If those zealots sit on top of those eggs as well, if they get good position, in between this mineral lines is a good spot for these zealots to start nice. going for the engage. Good Fuse. transfuse. The zerglings, though, really not in the best of positions. And more reinforcing ze uh, zealots are going to be able to hit this hard. Roaches are out. Ah! He needs to, ah, oh, he's not really on top of them as much as he would like to, as there's still lings there to help on out. And the zealots are being cleaned up. Spine finishes as well. He's going to hold on. He's going to hold on. And the queen keeps dancing. Keep dancing, queen. Drones, drones, drones. Show me drones. Show me drones. Build drones. Build drones. Build drones. Build drones. Yeah. Good hold. Five drones coming in. Monster. Mothership core does get that last kill, which is a bit of an annoyance because obviously drones could go down there too. Yeah. But he holds on. Nice play there. And nine drones, an excellent number to see. Nine's a good number. Good, good hold indeed. And now San has resided himself to the fact that he's got the robo facility on the way. He's warped in a few centuries as well so they can continue on uh, with this aggression, but Mini Razor's doing all right. Sees the robo, knows what he's up against now, and he is able to hold on against that. Did lose quite a few queens, lost quite a lot of units overall, but I would say that was a success of a hold. Um, Forge has been started, so he will go over to plus one attack, and Mortals, I imagine, would be on the way. He's gone for mm. an Observer first. Yeah, it looks like he may end up going for the third base again, but Mini Razor, yeah. he has to have seen the previous games. He has to know what could happen. Yep, he's got Overlords in good position, Zergling on the third, two Overlords outside the main base. And a lot of units will be made. Layers starting, ready for roach speed. No evos, just drones and units, full focus so far. This is going to be hard for Sam to get room to be sneaky, to be honest with you. Uh, he does try and push this Zergling away from the third, so he certainly doesn't want his opponent knowing about that. Uh, as he still has probes in production here, Sean. He's, he's going up to two more, and then, yep, still adding on. So it looks like the third here for now. Uh, what's his probe count? 49, 51. Does seem like he is looking towards that third year, even moving out now. Oh, hallucinated immortal. Cute move. 51 drones. There's a lot of roach lings being made. Oh, man, that would be so Wait. cool if he denied the ling from seeing that and moved out with a few hallucinated immortals. He's actually going to do it. That's really cool, but he's not being spotted in the middle of the map. Well, this can work <laughs> two ways, too. Ah, oh, he sees the third anyway. He sees the third, sees the units. Does he drone or build more units? Because he may try to go for an attack here. He may, but he's adding yeah. on three gas geysers. Yeah. Oh. No, 40 Whoa. links. He may try to break this third. He's got a lot of units out already. Are we going to see more units? No, six drones. Okay, so um, 18 roaches and about 40 links. That's still a lot. Yeah, it is. That's still a lot of units. Force fields have to be on point. Um, otherwise, he could take a lot Ooh, of damage. Spire's coming in. He's going to go over Whoa. towards Mutalisks as the, the follow-up piece. So he's going to start saving his gas. Uh, maybe drawn up a little bit more here, uh, add links after that, and just save his gas. So, oh, I can't actually. 
he doesn't know that these rocks have been killed off, so he can't come in from both sides. Uh, now he's he sees it. So. Break him. Force has got to be good here. It's going to take a Fortune while. Overcharge not going to be ready yet. Obviously, next is not good either. Buys time for units to get walked in. The Zerglings, though, they might be able to get a wraparound in Immortal. Indeed, they will do. They'll get one Immortal kill. Will they? No, not even. As the Force Fields will help that out. Very, very nice positioning Ooh, there. Oh, that's a lot of Roche's Mini Razor, he might have thrown away so many units there. He gets one Immortal in the end, but that was a lot of losses. It's a lot of losses indeed. How much gas has he got? Six, seven hundred. He could be up to about, I guess, 12 maybe. Maybe 12 Mutalists by the time a Spire is done. 12 Mutalists could be. Yeah. Maybe a bit shorter than that. Hmm. But we do see Blink and more Gateways. He could actually go for a big Blink play. I still, uh, yeah, he's definitely going for the big Blink play, but the Mutalists are, are going to be pretty good against this, though. Uh, you, As good as Stalkers are with Blink, you can get run around while the Prepping Army can be built for the follow-up. But yeah. there's Hallucinated Phoenix. We may see Sanders uh, go for a base trade. Uh, he's going to spot the Spire. Oh, he's see right. Spots the Spire the last second. What is his decision? Does he just continue Stargate. On? Instant to the Stargate. Instant double Stargate here, I think. Yep. And there he goes. All right, so the Blink is going to have to hold him on for a little while. And also cannons. He's got a, he's got a Photon Overcharge, a cannon in the main and the natural. I think he's going to be able to hold on long enough. Yeah, I think I so as well. Remember, there's no Evos, which means no ground army or ah. longevity with the ground army. New so. Racers is going for the carapace as well, so there is a big committal going to be coming out here to the air. All right. But can it even work with the double stargates now being added I think on? he's going to buy himself more than enough time with cannon, stalker, and mothership core here. Plus one weapons as well for the Phoenix. Yeah. He may go up to Fleet Beacon too. He may do. Yeah, you're right. <coughs> it's, it's the perfect opportunity, All but right. he doesn't Blink. have that much gas. Blink is done. Stalkers have been built in mass. Natural, unprotected, kind of. One he needs to get to the probes, which is good. Well, Blink forward. No, one Mutalus dead already. Not too oh bad so far. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. And then we have a pylon also blocking this fifth base for Mini Razor, who's looking to take expansions yeah. off the back of his opponent being slightly contained. Well, at the moment, he's playing only air. Like, this is going to be yeah. uh, a Mutalus Corruptor style, I would imagine. If it's just Mutalus, then, well, Phoenix is going to have a field day. Sam didn't really have the full gas income that he would have liked to have to have supported the warping of Stalkers as well as the Fleet Beacon and double Phoenix production. So he's going to be a little slow on that Fleet Beacon, which could come back to bite him because he just lost quite a few workers there. Another Mutalus dead. Worker count still more than healthy, though. Yeah, 61 uh, against 85 of Mini Reza, who's looking really good in terms of economy. Yeah, he's going to test the control of Sam, though. Remember who is still playing from Korea. Yeah. You need the Fleet Beacon if you're going to play this style out. You you can't go without it. There's no way. Yeah, but all you got to do is the, there's the Protoss play here. Sit tight on three bases. If you can get out harassment pylons. Whoa, Mini Razor, are you actually going to go in for this? Uh, this is, there's a lot of sentries. He's force shields. Okay, that's a good one back though. Okay, he lost quite a bit without doing Ooh, anything just Phoenix. there. Oh, but the Phoenix, they certainly have to keep themselves alive. So large army supply he's got. Large army supply indeed, and he is going to oh nice force field there. Very good force field. Maybe we're giving us a little second there to react to that. And those Phoenix are dying off here. Ah, oh, Sam could be in a bit of trouble. He has a lot of stalkers underneath this, though, and the firepower is holding on. Yeah. Those immortals at the back killing off those roaches. Yeah. So good. So, 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 so good. So Fleet Beacon done. Range on its way. You just got to really increase the Phoenix count here. Just rise, 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 rise the Phoenix. But they are low. It's only at four, which uh, will help out Mini Razor in the, the Mutalus Corrupt to fight. Middle base has been taken too, is his fifth. And he also is expanding down to the bottom left too. This is his moment to shine. This is where he could knock out yeah. San. It really is. Uh, there's so much on the line for both of these players. San just needs to get over this one hurdle uh, to then come to the live events and be here and show his worth on a live setting, which is amazing. He's touted to be one of the favorites for the entire thing. But now Mini Razor is looking at this and he's saying, this is a good opportunity, man. This is this is the best I'm going to get. Four Zealots on the right-hand side here found their way. This is a, an overload missing spot here. And the Four Zealots will bring him back, buying a little bit more time here for San. Oh. oh, it's not actually rerouted the Phoenix. Uh, sorry, the Corruptors and Mutalisks, as they do end up running into the Phoenix there for a second. And now, any Impulse Crystals is finished. So those Phoenix are going to be all the more potent uh, in the hands of San here. Yeah, but, I mean, they got plus one attack already done, plus two Carapace on the way. Phoenix is great against Mutalisks, but going to have a hard time bringing down Corruptors super fast. That's why the Stalkers are with them, man. <coughs> yep, that's, uh, sticking that's the Sticking around. Hope. That is the hope here. Counter-attack has been launched by... Uh, Mini Razor. It's a lot of links. How much is he really going to get done here, though? It's still 65 workers, so he didn't actually kill off any workers there. Having to fight direct on. Mini Razor's army composition is slowly becoming more and more redundant. 
He has to be so careful about his positioning as well. The Corruptors will zone out the Phoenix, but the Stalkers are always trying to be with them. All right, well, this middle base is being attacked, and it looks like we are going to see Minerazer go around the left-hand side here. Once again, the Corruptors keeping the Phoenixes away from the Mutalisks. And he catches a few Corruptors that were popping out there, so... Killing off one, at least, is nice for these Phoenix. The Phoenix production is just not going to stop, though, as now Mini Razor looks to put pressure on at this second base, but those force fields, good, holding on, buying time. This army is now caught in between a rock and a hard place. It has to get out of there somehow, but blinks forwards. San is trading off pretty nicely. The Phoenix do not want to be directing that uh, engagement directly, though. They need the Stalkers to bring down those Corruptors at the beginning so that he can advance on forwards. A lot of retreating losses that San's going to pick up there as the Corruptors yeah. fly away. But 10 more meters has been added on. Through having that middle base, that, that fifth base in the middle, it helped a lot. And now being able to re-expand to the bottom left. Needs to keep his income going up, though. As eventually San's going to run out of money himself. As his main base is almost dry and will be looking for a fourth soon. But uh, so far, quite close between these two players. San's starting to edge out, though. And his army composition is moving through the middle. Gets a few free kills. This is this could be scary. Uh, right now, the supplies are dead even. If Mini Razor, for, he's going just straight for it. This looks like a, a entirely blown base trade. Uh, the Phoenix are going to try and push oh, him yeah, away. Look at all these spines that he's just put down on the natural. Oh, he's wow. Definitely just trying to defend. And he got a few stalkers there as well. That's a great pickup. Well, the Mutalist and Cryptus decided to come back there without too many kills on that third. He got the third kill uh, at the but expansion. look at this, he's got the third kill, he's got the Stalkers on the right-hand side and then even Stalkers to the left as yeah. well. Yeah, this could go really well for him if he's able to do this. And now he's taken a significant army supply. Uh -oh. The Phoenix are getting to the Mutalists. The Corruptors aren't really zoning them out. And as long as he just warps in Stalkers from this point on, I think that San actually might have it. Yeah, San's walking away with this one, Kolaris. He's managed to... Uh, survive long enough. Wow. Ah, oh, Mini Razor playing this Muta Corruptor style just didn't work out for him. And you've got to remember that San threw down those double Stargates right as the Mutalisks were, you know, on the way, basically. He, it wasn't yeah. as like he had a Stargate opener to transition into it. The thing is, there's not enough Mutalisks now to stop the ground army. The, yeah. the Mutalisk count was, I don't know, it was like 20-ish, I think, but now it's down to seven. And there is more Stalkers. There's more than enough Stalkers at this point. Guardian Shield Stalkers, Corruptors, and Phoenixes. The, the battle of those don't even matter anymore as we don't see Phoenixes being continued to be built. Just Stalkers at this point. And those four Stalkers down to the bottom left, they walk away with an entire hatchery kill. So they are happy. They are content. Mini Razor now, though, not so much as he's trying desperately to find a way back into this game. But it's going to be difficult against the position we're seeing San in. Oh, yeah. Oh. Is, uh, a lot of links get picked off there, too. And... Well, I think the the end may be near for Mini Razor as San has got an army, which I don't think is going to be stopped anymore. He played that really well. His reaction times were good. His defense was solid. And his counter attacks and army movement was fantastic. Again, being able to pick off these bases, which should never really be able to happen. Probe hidden behind rocks emerges and throws down a pylon to go for aggression once again. As San now looks to just shut all these mutalists down. And as long as the stalkers just blink under this and start going to town, they're going to kill off this expansion. They're going to kill off this airborne army. And Mini Razor is dead in the dark. There is nothing much more he can do. He kills off all of the Phoenix, but there you go. GG, well played. San advances on. Good luck in premier as unfortunately mini razor gets him back knocked down to challenger which is a massive scare for players already qualified for the round of 16 and future ones to qualify as san managed to survive the latency issue he was playing with from korea into the europe server and finds himself a spot in the live tournament which will be played from of course the round of 16 above and that's going to send a uh, a big shake around the rest of the players here as San survived, which yeah. he looked like he could have lost today. Exactly. Congratulations to San, but it was a grueling climb that he had to make through this entire group. It certainly could have gone different ways. Mini Razor showed that his performances are strong, and he looks to try and qualify next season yeah. through to Premier. And I won't be surprised if he did. He looked good today. Yeah, Mini Razor, definitely a good showing and a good effort today, but not quite enough to be able to push through against San. Uh, but San, like Duck Duck before him, now finds himself in the prime position to be. And I think all eyes are going to be definitely on San, who's currently third in the World Championship Series ranking already. And we haven't even got really deep into the yeah. Premier League yet. 
And that, guys, pretty much does it for today uh, and our WCS group. Congratulations once again to Daishi and San advancing on in first and second place, respectively, to the round of 16. Uh, and make sure to tune in with us on Thursday as we have another group to unfold. That's right. This is, of course, week two. We have three days. We have two days left on Thursday and Saturday. Thursday is going to be a good group, and then Saturday gets even better. As Thursday, we have Stardust, Happy, who's been playing very well recently, Bly, and Bling, UK rep, 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 rep. And uh, then on Saturday, we have, I think, the hardest group of the entire Premier League, and that is definitely not to be missed out on. Oh, yeah. Genius, TLO, Grubby, and Cass. That's going to be good. That is going to be good. But also, guys, don't forget, in two hours' time, you can tune into WCS America, where they have Buell, the STC, Hyun, and Revival fighting out. That's one of the more stacked groups That's of uh, that group. tournament. That's a great group. All right. Well, that does it from us guys here at WCS Europe. Again, make sure to tune into WCS America as well as us on Thursday. That's going to do it for us. Bye for now.